This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. Sister Power's VIP guest today is Kimberly R. Kelly, author of the number one international best selling book, The Road to Mana Finding Healing, Happiness, and Power on the Road to Life. Kimberly is an anesthesiologist and medical acupuncturist specializing in anesthesia, acupuncture pain management and medical simulation. Join us as we discuss finding healing, happiness and power on the road to life. Welcome, Dr. Kelly. <laughs> Thank you, Sharon. Thank you so very much. It's a pleasure to be here today. I'm so happy that you're here. And the reason why I'm ex extremely happy about it, I like our title from your book, Finding Healing, Happiness and Power on the Road to Life because now we're in the throes after Thanksgiving of the holidays. And th I find that this is a time that people are feeling either lonely or they're feeling um, overwhelmed by the many things that is expected of all of us to get ready for the holidays. So I know you are going to map out for our Sister Power viewers the road to finding healing, happiness, and power on the road to life. And so tell me, give me a little bit of uh, background about you. About me, okay. I'm originally from Ohio, <laughs> a Buckeye. I've been in Hawaii for about 15 years. I was going through a change of life. I had always visited uh, Hawaii, vacationed here, and I thought that I would retire here. Never did I imagine that I would be working here. But as life would have it, here I am, and I'm happy to be here. Oh, good. I'm, I, you know, I was born in Toledo, Ohio. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So yes. that must be the connection. That's the connection. That is the connection. I had no idea. So what part of Ohio? So central Ohio. I'm off of um, Springfield between Dayton and Columbus. Sure. Small, small town off of I-70. You're off of I-75. Yeah, I live in Dayton, Ohio, too. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Born in Toledo, Dayton, Springfield. Really? We, my father had churches all throughout Ohio. Oh, oh yes. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, That's so we wonderful. Have so much in common. We do. I did not know. Wow. Oh, good. <laughs> well, getting back to your book. Yes. And I love it. When I first opened your book, it says, There is no greater agony than hearing an untold story inside you by one of my favorite poets, Maya Angelou. So, what prompted you to write this book? Well, I'll get back to the quote. One of the things that Maya Angelou says is there is no greater yeah, agony mm -hmm. than bearing an untold story inside of you. And I'll just go a little bit further and say there's no greater agony than letting a story bury you. So oh. as women, we all have stories. We all live this wonderful life, but we all have stories. And oftentimes, we don't share those stories. But I think it's in the sharing, number one, that we can become free, and number two, that we can empower other, other women when they hear our stories. Well, that's what it's all about. It and is. I think that people need to realize that you have to really like and love yourself first before you can really share your story and bring people into your wellness. And also, you are the uh, founder and director of CORE Wellness Hawaii. Tell us about your organization. So this organization came about because I, uh, I am a medical physician, and I've been doing anesthesia for about 30 years. And uh, it's we I'm Western trained, but I realize now that that may not be the best model for everybody. Western medicine is based on a pharmaceutical model uh, using medications. And what I found for myself in my own journey, that those weren't the things that I was looking to to help me to heal and to become whole again. What I looked for was more Eastern, more of a holistic uh, modalities to help me. And so that's really what I describe in the book. Um, we talk about meditation, talk about yoga, talk about nutrition, talk about exercise. Those are the things, mindfulness, the breath work, those are the things that we can do naturally yeah. that help us to heal. Those are the things that can sustain us a lifetime. So that's kind of what I share in the book. So it's more of my, more of a transition from the, what you might expect from a Western trained physician, anesthesiologist to be specific, um, to what really I, I've embraced in my own personal life. Um, to help with healing and wholeness 
using a more holistic approach to heal the mind, the body, and the spirit. Yeah, well, while they show us a picture of your book, I enjoyed this first part about it. It says, this is the story of five people who come together for one week looking for peace and a way to deal with the chaos of life. Anxiety, depression, burnout, compassion, fatigue, and moral injury laced with regret have dimmed their prospects of living full and happy lives. And looking at the cover of your book, The Road to Mana, is just beautiful and it's really peaceful and calming. How did you, what inspired you to write this book? <laughs> so um, a couple things. Number one, I'll, I'll just briefly talk about the cover. The cover is actually a real picture of the road to Mana. There is a road to Mana in uh, Waimea on the Big Island. There we are. And, there it is uh, right there. It's beautiful. <laughs> and so are you. <laughs> Thank you. And then in the background is um, Mauna Kea. Mm. Yeah. So, though I wanted to tell a story, we talk story, as you know, in, yeah. in, in, in Hawaii, and so I just wanted to talk story. I didn't want to be like a lot of the, um, the books, the novels, you need to do one, two, three, four, five things to help you heal. Well, that's not life, and it's certainly not life for me. So what I wanted to do was bring into five characters, and they go away uh, to a retreat on the Big Island, and there's a wise, sage lady, and her name is Sister. And Sister um, is very knowledgeable um, in the ways of, of life and also in the ways of healing. And so each of the characters represents different persons that you may meet in your life. Um, one is a physician, one is a, a veteran who's dealing with PTSD and anxiety. One is a, um, just like a, a housewife who's had to put her career on hold. Um, and another one is um, a young lady in like a, a, a millennial just transitioning, she's got issues with her gender, she has issues uh, just in life, where is she gonna go? Just transitioning in general out of her parents' home into her own place, so. Well, this is definitely a must read book because out of the five characters, mm -hmm. everyone out there listening and viewing Sister Par right now knows someone that is going through depression, anxiety, and just feeling overwhelmed. And I think one of the characters is a biracial woman. Yes. And she's trying to yes. find her yes. way. Yes, yes, absolutely. And we, we get a lot of that, um, especially here um, in Hawaii. But it's it's almost as if our cultures are intermingled. And but then how do we deal with that? Sometimes our society isn't necessarily kind. But if we give you ways and tools to help with that, it makes it a little easier journey. And so that's what I do in the book. That's what you do mm -hmm. for each uh, uh, individual. Now. Are these individuals people that you know? No, actually not. Oh. No, they're based. They're they are based on people that I have known, mm -hmm. or in my own life, different parts of different aspects of me, through the years. Um, but they're not. It's not a real person. You would think. You think they are because you'll see some of you in each of them. I'm sure if you oh you've read absolutely. And you probably well, pieces of you there. Because we live in such a society that they want more and more, and it's almost, it feels like that you almost need to be perfect, and we don't live in a perfect world, and no one is perfect. Correct. And what would you tell that person that's trying to please everyone, and is trying to do too much, and not giving enough back to themselves? Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> let it go. Let I have it go. a girlfriend that wrote a book about that. Let it go. <laughs> Well, because you can, the only person that you can really be is yourself. Mm. And in terms of trying to heal yourself, you have to heal from the inside out. And if you're not being authentic, not being transparent, then it's really not going to work. And so that's my own philosophy. You just let it go. You have to be who you are. How does that person find out who they are? If well, they don't, uh, what is their road to just starting out on that path? So I think they have to be comfortable listening to that inner voice because your body knows, number one, and then your heart knows. Now your mind, your mind will kind of play tricks with you and have you think one thing or another, but your heart usually knows. And I think that's the beauty of as being a woman, we have this inner knowledge, this inner intuition that sometimes we doubt, we don't tap into that. But if we sit quietly, mm. alone time, quiet time, peaceful time, usually in the wee hours in the morning, you'll find that voice, because it's always there. But we don't listen to it and think, oh no, that can't be true. But it is. 
intuition is, I, I always tell people, when this tells me something, it's, I follow this. This, you know, that can lead us, <laughs> our heart can lead us here and there, and our mind can take us, and I think we can right. overthink things Absolutely. too much. But that intuition, that gut feeling, just, just really puts you on the right path. That's the universal knowledge that's trying to tell you which the way to go. universal knowledge. Mm -hmm. Wow. So the book, The Road to Mana, give us some more information about uh, their journey when they first start off. When the five individuals come together, they end up where? Well, but first of all, how did they find out about this, this journey, this retreat? Is it, was it a retreat? It is, it's a retreat. Okay. It's a retreat. And so this is, the, the, our retreats that we do here in Hawaii are actually based on the book. So that's kind of the, the adventure that you can get. But most and foremost, I think that we, we heal and we learn in community. It's not me telling you what to do. It's not that parental dictatorship. It's more of a, a, of a community um, relationship. And so the five develop a relationship. The first day, there's some tension. I don't want to tell you the whole story. But there's some tension and some anxiety because it's five people from all different walks of life. They don't know each other mm -hmm. at all. They just know that they've come for different reasons. The veteran came because his commander um, had come several years prior to the retreat. And he said, hey, if you're trying to get your life together, this is where you need to go. So he was reluctant, but he was having some marital problems at home with his wife. And so he did, and it was, she gave him an ultimatum, get it together or you got to go, buddy. So that was one of the, his motivating factors. Um, the young lady, or her name is Reiko, she was actually there on the big island just with some other friends. She was doing some hiking and whatnot around the volcanoes. And then she saw it um, in one of the lodges there. And so that's why she went. Wow. When we come back, sure, we'll finish. We're, gonna, we're gonna finish the story and finish talking about finding healing, happiness, and power on the road to life. Don't touch that dial. We'll be right back. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. When I was growing up, I was among the one in six American kids who struggle with hunger. And hungry mornings make tired days. Grumpy days. Bleh kind of days. But with the power of breakfast, the kids in your neighborhood can think big and be more. When we're not hungry for breakfast, we're hungry for more. More ideas. More dreams. More fun. When kids aren't hungry for breakfast, they can be hungry for more. Go to hungeris.org and lend your time or your voice to make breakfast happen for kids in your neighborhood. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, inviting you to come visit with us on Cannabis Chronicles, a 10,000-year odyssey, where we explore and examine the plant that the muse has given us. And stay with us as we explore all of the facets of this planet on Wednesdays at noon. Please join us. Aloha. Welcome back to Sister Power with our special guest, Dr. Kimberly Kelly. And we're discussing your book, The Road to Mana, Finding Healing, Happiness, and Power on the Road to Life. And before we took the small break, mm -hmm. you were telling us about the five individuals that um, attended the retreat. And you stopped at Reiko. Right. So I, I, I spoke about the veteran. I spoke about Reiko and her transition. And then there's also a physician. Uh, what a lot of people don't under, know is that physicians um, have a high incidence of compassion fatigue and burnout as well. And so if we as healthcare providers don't buckle up our seatbelt first, then how can Ooh, we serve you? Right. And so um, there's a, Sarah is the character there who, who demonstrates some things that Sarah has to learn. Um, and then there's another character, his name is um, Ira. Ira is an older man and he actually had a farm out on the Big Island, a coffee farm. Um, his wife died, she had uh, breast cancer and um, he had some sons that he was mentoring to take over the to take over the business. Well, the sons betray him, and so he has to deal with betrayal mm. and guilt, and and um, also grief and the loss of his wife. So. Yeah, those are three. I tell you, betrayal is if you've experienced <laughs> it before, that is so traumatic yes. because it's always the person closest to you. Yes, it is, and that's what makes it so difficult. So what when. when what was their takeaway once they, how, how, first of all, how long was the retreat? It's a five-day retreat. It's a five-day retreat, mm -hmm. five individuals in five, in five days. Five individuals, 
five days, five different healing modalities, each person, instead of me saying, oh, I want you to learn about massage, each person actually represents a healing modality. Mm -hmm. So it makes it a little different. And then when they, they as they are on their journey and in, in their experiences at this retreat, um, because it's a very experiential retreat, they just don't sit and, 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 and talk around the campfire. It's a little bit more than that. They go hiking, they go swimming, they bike, they do all sorts of things on this retreat, so that to, to, to bring them together in that community. So. Well, that's a perfect, you know, retreats are just a perfect place to come together, especially mm -hmm. with people you don't know. Mm -hmm. And I'm president of Sisters in Par in Hawaii, and if we were to create a retreat mm -hmm. and partner with CORE Wellness Hawaii, mm -hmm. what would the attendees um, expect from the retreat? You have workshops as well. Correct, correct. But from the retreat, it would depend on the, the size of the group, but they could expect a very unique experiential retreat, not only getting to know their sisterhood, but getting to know mm -hmm. themselves. And that's really what makes it genuine and, and important. The other thing they would, I think sometimes we need permission. To, to be free, sometimes permission to be okay and not be, be whole, to almost, I don't want to say broken, but we're sometimes not all put yeah. together. Sometimes we, in certain areas of our life, we have a flat tire. Well, how do we, how do we fix that? How, how are we okay with saying, I, I, that, that may have happened to me? And it's only through telling your story. Telling your story. And, you know, I want people to know that this is the number one international best-selling book. <laughs> Thank so you should definitely go out and get it. It was very inspirational to me oh, reading you. about the various um, people in the book. Mm -hmm. And I, you were, let's talk about, because you do corporate wellness and team building as well. Yes, yes we do. Yes, we do. So there's a group of us. I don't work um, by myself. There's a group of us. We have a counselor. We have a, a rolfer. We have a massage therapist. And we all sort of work together. And it would, we would do an intake form to determine what your organization would need. We just don't have one size fits all. Mm. That's not how life works. And so we don't do that. And so we would uh, get down and sit with you, do a consultation, and see exactly what you needed. And we would try to provide. We would not try. We would provide that for you. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Is there a minimum, maximum of people? Oh, no, no, no. So how do you get the word out that you, that this wonderful uh, organization is available. <laughs> Core Wellness Hawaii. This is something that we need to do at least quarterly. I think. I, I agree. You I, do. I agree with you. Absolutely. So this is a startup company. As I said, this is something that uh, came out of a result of my work at the hospital, uh, trying to fill a void in another way. I mean, I can affect each person one at a time. I just do anesthesia one at a time. But how can I affect um, more people and share what my what my thoughts are and and what I believe may May, may, may help them, and so that's how Core Wellness came about. Wow. So it's, a, it's a startup company. So um, how long? How long have you been uh, in a, business? About a, about a year, and we do retreats and whatnot. So it's programs like this that we get the word out. Oh, good. Yeah. Wonderful. Is there a retreat coming up soon? Um, our, we, we've shut down for the year, but uh, in March, we have a very large retreat. That's oh, to... tell us about the retreat in March. <laughs> I, I, you read the book. It's kind of mirrored off oh, the book. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you heard it live here. You have to read the road you to, read, to You have to read the book. Okay. <laughs> to, and, and it tells us a little bit about the retreat that's coming up in March? It's coming up in March, yeah. It's, it, it'll be just, it's not going to be a five-day retreat because it's actually going to be here. Um, on this island. So it's, re it's just going to be a two and a half day retreat where we hit just most of the modalities, if not all the modalities, and we just kind of share and talk and, and come into community and relationship. So let's talk about movement, yes. staying active. Mm. You know, and I think that sometimes we, we just settle into, not only into our work and we're sitting all the time, but just settle in life, period. Correct. We do. So movement represents exercise. We have to exercise. And if we do it, we know that we feel better. <laughs> we do feel better. It increases the dopamine receptors. And so we're much more happy people. But it's, it's just that, that initial inertia, getting up off the couch and just going. But even if you just walk. Yeah, that's my favorite walk. exercise you just is walk. walking. Just walk. There's a marathon coming up. Just walk it. Oh, <laughs> the Honolulu Marathon. I believe it's the 8th or 9th. Of uh, January then, Feb uh, no. of December? Just December. Yes, this yes. year is moving yes. so fast. But but that's a that's a that's a huge goal. But mm -hmm. just start small. Just walk. Walk for five minutes. Walk for ten minutes. And then the next week you do a little bit more, and you'll be amazed. But just don't stop. Just don't stop. <laughs> just don't stop. Keep it moving. You got to keep it moving. 
<laughs> I like that. And then mindfulness. Let's talk about mindfulness. So when I speak, uh, think about mindfulness, I think about the breath. And here in Hawaii, um, ha, the breath of ha, Hawaii, that's what Hawaii is all about. But the breath, co focusing, concentrating on your breath as it enters your body and as it leaves your body, thinking wonderful, happy thoughts, mm. and just focusing on the moment. So many times we're thinking about what we're going to do next, as opposed to being present right here in this moment. That's what mindfulness is. That's such a good point because we live in such a fast-paced world. It is, it is. And you're thinking about next month, next year already. Someone is asking me, well, what are you going to be doing for a holiday that was six months away? And I, I, I'm trying to figure out <laughs> right now the next hour. Right, So right. how does a person position themselves to start putting themselves in the moment? So in the moment, you can be in the moment anywhere. You can be in the moment right here. All you need to do, close your eyes. Mm. Is that some just that's like, uh, meditation? It is. Um, people call it different things. I don't believe you have to be on the floor. I don't believe that you have to be in a certain position because that you may not be able to get in a certain position, number one, and it may not be convenient for you. So why put all those constraints, restraints on it? Just, just do it. And you do what you can, when you can, as you can. Just do it. And just keep it simple. Just keep it simple. I think that's another um, aspect we should add to our life, simplicity. Yes. And it's so much easier just to keep it simple. Just keep it simple, be authentic, be transparent. Because nothing, at the end of the day, none of it matters. And, <laughs> and, and guess what? We're in control of absolutely nothing. Correct. Correct. We think we are, but we're not. No, we are not. Do you plan to write another book? I do. I do. Um, each of the characters actually um, will have their own separate book at some point. And then this one is more for adults. I do really, I'm very, very concerned about our young people. Um, we have bullying and those mm. kinds of things that th they're having difficulty with, things that we experienced in my, in my time, but not nearly to the extent that there are now. I'm, with the internet and all of those kinds of things, it's just very um, unfortunate um, and difficult to be a teenager. So I want to address um, a book specifically for that age group to give them some tools to help them ease on down the road. But when I, the road to mana is mana means power, mana Ooh, means yes, strength. Explain it to us. <laughs> and that's what we need to, to have as, as women. You know, this is a very important time in our life as women in terms of medical school. For the first time, the women outnumber the, the, the men in medical school. Um, Women are coming along, and you, you witness the uh, races, the congressional races. There were a lot of women who were very, very successful. So it's, I don't want to say it's women power, but it's just a change of the time, and we have a lot of power, and we need to be able to utilize that power, not step back, but step forward and embrace it. And so the road to mana, I kind of think about, do you remember what, The Wizard of Oz? Yes. And, and Dorothy... D Dorothy went through all these experiences with the crazy monkeys and the munchkins and all of this. And at the end of the day, she was, you know, begging the, the great Oz to help her. But at the end of the day, she had the power. She had it all along, but she didn't, just didn't realize it. Well, that is what I'm trying to explain here in the book. You have the power all along. You just don't realize it, but you have to tap into it. Oftentimes, we give it away. We give it to the physician, oh, doctor, please help me, all of that. No, you have it right within your very heart. Right now, you have it. But how do you tap into that? How that's what we talk about. That's the mindfulness. That's the mindfulness. They're going to show the cover again yes. so people can purchase this, the number one international best selling book, <laughs> The Road to Mana Finding Healing, Happiness, and Power on the Road to Life. And it's so needed in the, in the world that we live in today. And I always tell people it's so much easier to be kind to one another. Oh, yes. And I notice the difference when the holidays are coming, everyone is cheerful. And oh, this happy Kwanzaa, Merry Christmas, Happy Thanksgiving. If we could give each other on a daily basis just a smile to one another, just a compliment to one another, mm -hmm. that just that that would make everyone feel better. It would. One of the things my dad uh, says uh, to me, or has always said to me, he said, Kimmy, <laughs> he said, if you find someone without a smile, give them yours. Oh, I like that. Say that again. Say that to the camera right there. They need to hear that. If you find someone without a smile, give them yours. Give them yours. And it's so easy to smile. I forgot it's how easy. many. You're, you're a physician. <laughs> how many muscles we have when we smile, and they're far more 
muscles when we frown? Correct. Is that correct? correct? Okay. I know a little you, bit about you that. You're doing well. <laughs> right. Very nice. <laughs> so what hospital do you practice at? I actually work at Tripler. So I work with the veterans, and I'm uh, very, very honored to do so. And um, it was one of those experiences, th th working at Tripler, that also inspired the book, uh, because we do have a lot of veterans that have uh, challenges and issues with PTSD and anxiety. And we are doing much better. The VA is doing a, a better job, but it's not um, nearly what it could be, given the resources that are, that are directed in that way. And so... Um, one of the reasons why I want to bring light and focus on that, because we have to help our, our veterans. Absolutely, and I like the fact that you have military and veteran programs. Absolutely, I'm a veteran myself. You're a veteran, <laughs> all right. Absolutely. So let's just bring everything home mm -hmm. and summarize and just leave um, our audience with just a peaceful journey that each person should try to take and input in their lives? I think never, never travel alone. I think you need companionship. I think you need relationship. I, need you, I think you need friendship uh, in, in health and in sickness. It doesn't have to necessarily be a spouse, but a girlfriend. Yes. That's really what we need. That sisterhood, that bond. Um, I think you need to be patient with yourself. Mm. I think you need to be kind and loving to yourself. Sometimes we beat ourselves up with our thoughts and our words. That self-talk is very, very important. Um, I, I think innately God has given us uh, healing power with nutrition, uh, eating properly, plant-based, whole food diet. I think that's important um, because our food source is contaminated in a sense. Yeah. It's difficult to get uh, good, healthy, wholesome foods. We have GMOs and those kinds of things that, that alter uh, what we're eating, and so it's not like it used to be. So that's very, very important. I think massage, a simple massage is just, and our, and our elders used to do it. You've seen them sometimes in the kitchen that just kind of yeah, do it. Yeah, they're just massaging yeah. their hands. So that, just massage your hand. You can massage your foot. A whole body would be excellent. But you can't <laughs> always do that. But you can help yourself. But, the, but the, there's, there's some Japanese uh, traditions that really do the hand massage that can really help. Wow. Um, mindfulness, just the breath work. Just be, t take a moment to take a nice, cleansing, deep breath. How about if we stretch? Just bend a little. Maybe touch our toes. Ooh. 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 Okay. <laughs> Those kinds of things. Just a simple thing. Nothing fancy. Yeah, nothing fancy. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Well, I want to thank you, Dr. Kelly, thank for you. coming on Sister Power. Thank you for and the empowering, invitation. inspiring, and educating us. And once again, I want everyone to go out and purchase the number one international <laughs> best-selling book, The Road to Mana, Finding Healing, Happiness, and Power on the Road to Life. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you.